Hey, welcome back. I'm Adam. I'm Brent. And we are the, the Wall, Wall Twins. Twins. And tonight, we cook yet again on the Blackstone. We are cooking on the Blackstone and we're cooking a favorite of ours. In fact, Brett, what are we cooking? A ribeye steak. We are doing this ribeye steaks and we're super excited. We'll get into how we're prepping this, which is super simple. This is the Blackstone. A lot of people give it a lot of hate. They say it's the wrong tool for the wrong job. We disagree and we'd like to show you. So if that seems like something you'd be interested, our take on the ribeye steak on the Blackstone griddle, then stick around while we dig in. I can't believe the Wall Twins. They're right there. That's one of them. That's the other one. I'm the other one. So like we said, welcome back. However, if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. We love to get together. We love to cook and we just love to be together. Did I say we love to be together? Hey, and just in case you haven't said it, we love to be together and <laughs> we love being together. But we actually love cooking us some amazing steak. Yep. I know it's tough to see, but all we have on this steak is salt and pepper. And the reason why is because steak in itself, especially like the ribeye, the T-bone, porterhouse, filet mignon, they're such good cuts of beef and flavorful. The salt, pepper just brings out those flavors and that is all we need. That's all we want to do. We want to bring what? out the, we want to bring out those flavors. We got the salt and pepper to give the flavors on the outside, to marry with the flavors on the inside. If you can hear the soft soothing sounds of Florida, we got the cicadas once again but we enjoy it. They're fans of the Wall Twins. They are, they're cheering us on. But let's go ahead and get to the griddle. Now, right now, the griddle is at low to medium low, but I actually turned it a little bit warmer because I wasn't feeling, like okay. feeling a whole lot of heat. So when we put this, this steak on, this ribeye on, it will start sizzling. You're gonna hear the crowd start to cheer. Maybe not go wild, which is good. That's what you wanna hear when you put bacon on, but here we go. All right, so I'll use the tongs actually to hold it up. I'll use the spatula. Yeah, the spatula, there you go. To uh, beat some of that off there. And you can wipe it too. The spatula actually can work for that. There you go. We're just trying to take off the excess salt. A lot of this has been sitting for about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, only now. about 15, 20 minutes. We've got avocado oil. The intention was vegetable oil. We don't have it right here with us. Doesn't matter. Any oil is gonna work. Vegetable, avocado oil, olive oil, anything that's gonna give extra flavor, the avocado oil does just and that. And also help with the non-stick in the process. Great, we're gonna spread the oil around, which obviously we don't need a whole lot of area because Adam's gonna throw that down. And we're gonna do, uh, this time we will, Brett, I'm sorry, the crowd goes wild. So with the sear, Brett did go ahead and crank it up just a little bit. Uh, we got the meat on there and it's gonna it's gonna turn out well. Uh, I can't wait to, to see what Medium this looks well. like. Medium well, either way. <laughs> <laughs> Steak <laughs> cooking joke. <laughs> so we're gonna do two minutes per side for the sear. Um, in fact, Adam will check in, uh, I'd say one more minute. Okay. And we should see a nice, a nice uh, golden to dark sear to start. He'll flip it again and we'll get a sear on the other side and for another two minutes. And then at that point, he will turn it back. All right, so it's been about two minutes. Yep, we're going to go ahead and give this a flippity flop, bro. Flippity floppity. And you can see the sear, you can actually see the sear on the bone as well. Look but we that. got it, look at that sear coming up here, especially right here in between. Adam did a great job right now finding good cuts of not only beef and steak, but a good price because right. You know, with the situation going on, uh, it's it's tough to find. Steak, steak is hard to price. Steak is hard to come by for sure. And uh, we tried to find the best cut that we could for the best price that we could, um, recognizing we were on a budget. We didn't grab a $30, $40 steak. So what you see here is absolutely the perfect steak. We got the bone, obviously it's gonna add the flavor. We got the fat here, a very thick fat cut here a piece here, some here, a little bit here, and some right in here that is just gonna do a wonderful job of flavoring all the steak all together. This is gonna be absolutely amazing. My mouth is watering knowing already how good this is gonna taste. Go ahead and flip it, it's probably already seared okay. on the outside. Okay, and then we're just gonna go a few minutes more so, on either uh, side. Yeah, so what we'll do is maybe five minutes per side at this point, and it should be done. This is only uh, maybe an inch thick cut steak. So it's gonna cook pretty quick. I, I might feel comfortable saying three minutes and then three minutes and Perfect. let's pull it yeah. and we'll look at it, okay? One thing too, people say that uh, wrong tool for the job, the Blackstone or a griddle for the steak. The thing is to me, cooking it directly on, what I appreciate is I'm able to lock in those juices. We get that sear and I don't have grease or anything going through. 
how many times on a grill I put a steak on and all of a sudden the flames are coming up because I'm, yep. first of all, I'm losing all that grease, all that flavoring that is just dropping down and causing those flare ups. I like, I like a good sear. I'm not a huge fan of char on a steak. To me, it dries it out rather quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, I appreciate that. So one, one advantage there for the Blackstone, not to say I'm opposed to a grill for a, a steak. This is just a way to cook an amazing steak on the Blackstone. And again, like I said in that cook, a lot of steak houses don't let a flame touch the steak. If I'm cooking this at home and it's, we're cooking indoors, yeah, I'll start on the stove top and toss it in the oven. But I also say, why not put it on the Blackstone if you can? It gets you outside, it gets you, dude, you're cooking steak outside. I love it, I absolutely enjoy it. In fact, my family loves it and love it and friends that come over and I'll cook a steak for them and it's, it's nothing but praises, it's awesome. Look at that, dude. All right, so we're gonna go about three more minutes, then if, we're gonna pull this that, off. All right, so we are ready. Adam, we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. Pull it off, literally pull it off. All right, that is a beautiful cut of steak. We're gonna let that sit about five minutes on there, just kind of see, uh, sit in those juices and let it sink in. And we're gonna cut that, we're gonna give it five minutes. All right, it's just under five minutes that that gorgeous steak has been sitting there taunting me, yes. by the way. <laughs> Smells like a steakhouse up in here. We're gonna go ahead and cut this. Now I am gonna cut this with my Farberware knife. Brett, you got one of these. Yep. Absolutely loved it, it was beautiful. I had to go ahead and order one. We'll go ahead and put the link below where you can get it to from Amazon. For the price, it's a ridiculously sharp and amazing knife. It also has, you gotta pull, yep, there you go. It has the self-sharpening sheet, so I really appreciate that. But let's go ahead and let's tear into the steak. Bro, look at that. And now another thing, I'm gonna butt in here, Adam, and look, you can see the juiciness. Look at the cut of steak. Look at that, that thing's massive. Um, these juices are just pouring off here like cray cray. Brett, go ahead and grab you some. I'm gonna grab this one right here. So, without further ado, this ribeye was absolutely a blast to cook. And I will say, this was so easy and simple and delicious. I was gonna say to Adam, you know, for presentation, why don't we go ahead and lift the cutting board to show the steak. <laughs> The juice is running off so much. His dog is sitting down there. Chloe is waiting for it. Ooh. If we went like this, it would be Niagara Falls off of that thing. So Brett, like I say though, this thing can look amazing. Which it obviously does. This can smell amazing. Smell check, check. Listen on the griddle, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it anymore. But if this doesn't taste amazing. Which it will. Then this was all for naught. Cheers. I'll eat to that. My, my brother. brother. Oh my, oh my God. Okay. Yep. I am not kidding when I say quite possibly the best steak I have ever had. The thing I love about filet mignon, it feels like it melts in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, This yeah. is doing the exact same thing. The, the, the marbling within this cut is so good. Adam, and this is where we got to give the credit to the salt and pepper, yes. the simple flavorings. That's all you need. We didn't use butter. We didn't throw any herbs on it. No oh spices, not, not the Montreal. Salt and pepper did its job. The seasoning is perfect on this. The salt was perfect on this. Listen, we're losing daylight, so we kind of got to wrap this up quickly. I am so happy we came back to do this. We, we knew that this one was going to be a tough one to do. Does a ribeye steak belong on the Blackstone? Not only does it belong on the Blackstone, it should only belong <laughs> on the Blackstone. I would say unequivocally, yeah. the ribeye belongs on a Blackstone. I mean, this I, was delicious. The juices are still pouring out of the oh top. God. This is... Well, listen. Yeah, yeah, Brett we can... I, mm, go ahead. Brett and I are gonna go devour the rest of this. I'm still chawing, chawing away here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Every bite. <clears throat> that salt and pepper... Perfect. ...brings out the perfect meat flavorings of that steak. I can't get over it. No. But Brett, let's go ahead and, and wrap this up because I want to go enjoy this steak. Aside from coming and cooking absolutely delicious, amazing ribeye steak. Which, to, in my opinion, not just because we cooked it, right. oh was the gosh. best steak. But this really surprised me. Simple salt and pepper. We thought we kind of cooked it too much, but as we cut, it was like, oh no, it's, 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 it's just the way we want it inside. It is 
Uh, and this is for a thin cut of meat, like I said, meat is hard to come by. This turned out perfectly, but we're gonna go ahead and eat this before it gets too cold. So, Brett, at no point were we over chewing because it was overcooked, which is can be the worst thing about a steak. These things were like butter. These, this steak was like butter. So we take a couple chomps, and it's just perfect. So, so we're gonna go ahead and get up out of here, Brett. But aside from yeah. going to cook this amazingly delicious ribeye steak. Why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin, no, no matter no. what. And with that, we bid you adieu. And a don't. Forget to like and subscribe. And greet along. along.